Welcome everyone, Kevin Carpenter, Volunteer CPPCon, and I'm here with Andreas. Uh, he's going to be teaching a class this year, and he's got a talk this year, and I think it might even be his first time with CPPCon, which, I mean, it's virtual, so that's got to be even more of a showcase for him. Uh, but I'll let Andreas introduce himself. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, hello, Kevin. Um, thanks for having me here. Um, I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant um, for C++. I recently um, now being the CEO of my own company called Unique Code. So it's, um, yeah, it's my goal to teach C++ to people. Nice. And so this year you're, uh, I mean, you've been, a, you've been an instructor for a long time, but this is your first time giving a class at CPPCon. And so Uh, you're doing modern C++ when efficiency matters. And so I, I can guess some of the topics that are in there, and I've seen the syllabus, but why don't you tell us a bit about what you're going to cover in the class? So, um, yes, the, the idea of the class is to teach um, modern C++, so that uh, I mean C++11 to C++17 to people who have a little knowledge about um, modern C++, um, or no knowledge, we will see how that turns out. And I will show several constructs, um, which I think are important of the elements of modern C++, and also with the, um, the aim to show what are they mean in terms of um, the resulting binary size, so what, what's behind them. So very easy, um, things, for example, are range-based for loops. So they are a great wrapper around the traditional for loops, but much more safe. And what the compiler internally does to create them is easy, it's simple, and um, it's good to know because in few cases you may notice the difference between them. And then we have, of course, um, things like lambdas, um, which are all over the place now since we have them in the language. And I will also show how they are implemented and um, how they behave, where you can um, use them, um, how they can be help um, writing, well, let's say less code and um, more unique code, smaller code, things like that. Um, I will also, um, of course, use um, Godbolt or Compile Explorer to show um, how things um, are on this side. And of course, I will use my own tool, C++ Insights, to show what is behind all the constructs, or at least uh, a few of the, contra the constructs. So that's the idea. It's, it's funny you mentioned the CPP Insights because I was actually looking at that this morning and the fact that you mentioned the range-based for loop because that's the sample that comes up when you pull it up. And it's just interesting to see how it breaks down, how it actually generates the for loop you know, based upon the modern code that we actually put in. And so um, I, of course, tried to paste in some other code, which unfortunately had includes that I shouldn't have. So I had to abandon that for the moment, but I look forward to going back okay. and seeing what else I can get out, get out of that. Um, and so, you know, it's funny you talk about the lambdas too, because I did, you know, before our interview last night, I was going through looking and you have a, you did a lambda talk for code dive, correct? Uh, yes, that was last year. Yes. Yeah. And, and so if people want to see the kind of things that you teach and how you teach, that would be a good video that they could end up going to look at. Yes, for sure. I'm, I'm not sure if we can go into that um, depth uh, in the class because lambdas are not the only topic, but it's, it's for sure. Um, it shows a lot of how I like to teach and um, things that may come up in the class as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it, it's interesting because... Um, You know, when I was interviewing with Klaus, I had taken his class uh, last year and he also ended up doing move semantics. And so, you know, I said this in the interview with him as well. There is this very big difference of the detail that you as an instructor can give to someone that's in your class versus just seeing a small talk. You know, it is certainly you, you they'll get an example of what you of how you teach, but it's more just that because the breadth of what you can cover in your class is just far greater over the period of time. So if someone's interested in taking your class, I'd say definitely look at the video, but just know, you know, especially as we're looking at the details of what you're going to teach in the class, you know, lambdas is listed twice and you've probably got almost 15 other topics in there. So, you know, you're certainly going to get a lot more from the class. 
Um, so yes, and just to mention that the the advantage of the class over the talk, of course, is it's way more interactive than a talk. So the the cold dive experience was really interesting because it was in a cinema. I, I couldn't really see anybody, and that makes it hard to interact with the audience. But that's a benefit of the virtual version. Now I can see everybody uh, with its camera on screen. And um, I hope that we can um, emulate a, a usual in-person training here as well. And then you can get much more out of a class than of a talk because you can ask questions anytime. Absolutely. So your first CPP con, and it's going to be virtual. So everybody will be in Remo. Um, I don't know if you got to check that out yet. Have you used Remo? Have you seen the, that interface with any place else yet? No, I haven't used it. I tried to check it out, but um, the demo video I saw didn't help me much. Um, and um, the best I understood is that's browser-based um, application. And um, I saw somewhere in the Slack channel that um, instructors or um, teachers use um, Stream Deck or something like this, potentially yeah, so to I'm, stream there, so. Yeah. The, the technology that streams in is, there's lots of options, but generally we get that table experience where you can sit around and chat with everybody. And then when the conference starts, it's just like, I, I will say, I'm hoping to give a demo of that before we get to the conference um, because there are, there's lots of videos of how to use it, but there aren't really a lot of videos that show what it's like from the user side. So um, yes. that may be forthcoming, but I guess, you know, the other thing is, is since it is your first CPP con, you're also your first time giving a talk there. And go ahead and tell us a little bit about the talk because it's back to basics in a two part, right? Yes, uh, I somehow managed to, to get that talk as well and uh, a two parter there. Um, and it's about templates. And the idea here is uh, when I teach, um, Something that often comes up is um, that people after class tell me, well, let's say the class was about C++ 11, 14, something like this. And after that, people say, well, um, I learned a lot about these topics, but you also made me believe in templates. I didn't use them before because, I don't know, I found them scary or I, I didn't saw an opportunity, things like that. And um, so the, the idea of the talk is... Um, to show templates in hopefully easy way um, to motivate people using them. I will not, there is no chance that I um, convince everybody or it's a, they are perfectly writing templates after this talk, but it should be a motivation showing them they are not so scary as just because there's a keyword template in it and the ankle brackets. Um, so. That's the main motivation. And I like to go through the different kinds of templates, show a few examples, how you can use them, where you can use them, hopefully senseful and helping your code cleaning it up, um, making it easier to, to read, write, and understand. And well, if I had a second, uh, third slot, I would probably squeeze in more about concepts um, from C20, but um, two slots are uh, enough anyway. <laughs> It's interesting because I'm one of those that was really scared of templates. I, I used to write a lot of Windows application code. And so I was consuming libraries more than using. And it's like, you know, you know, you're using templates when you're using the STL, but it's, it's really well and transparent. And so uh, my current company I work with, we do credit card transactions. And so in this last few years, I've had a good opportunity because you, you find you're writing a lot of boilerplate clothes code that would be for Visa versus MasterCard. They're both a credit card transaction. They're just, you know, slightly different. So I, I agree. It, it takes a little bit to get into, but once you do, you can start really finding great ways to use templates. So yes. um, anything else you're really looking forward to this year? Any talks you're looking forward to seeing? Um, I haven't I just updated my own uh, uh, bio on uh, the Sketch page. Uh, I haven't looked at it deeply. Um, in, I, in general, I look forward to the virtual version. Um, I, I think it's it's amazing and great that we have these abilities, these opportunities to still have conferences. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to Remo. I um, read uh, about the ideas behind it and why you um, chose it. And I think it's 
it's excellent that the idea of recreating what we had in person to to make it not just um something i can watch on youtube for example um so to add value here so i'm really looking forward to that and um other than that um no i haven't looked in the talks i cannot tell so far well in, in all fairness i think the schedule's only been out for a few days now so it did take a yeah. while to get up but you know pandemic life everybody's doing the best that they can right now right <laughs> yes yes so well i appreciate your time today and uh i look forward to seeing your talk at the conference and i hope you have a great class and thanks for joining me thank you very much thanks for having me bye-bye bye-bye